Yeah, I like all these big doors. Right? They're the one with joints and flex divisions. Flex divisions to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> Here. Summertime's getting closer. Gonna chill right now. I think this is on her way in. So we'll just a second here. Uh, in the meantime, let's approve the minutes of the April 24th, 2018 regular meeting. Have a motion? Second. Fred made the motion. Mary made the second to that. Is that all this though? Yes. Okay, Mr. Yes. Mr. Baker's. Unless we hear differently, he's voting yes. Okay. Um, we have one person signed in uh, tonight. When Ray gets back, he can give me the pink sheet, please. Come on in, Karen. We're just now getting started. <coughs> Mr. Baker's on the uh, telephone. He's going under the weather. better off that he's not here because he might contaminate his with me. Right. And I said, I agree. Okay, I'll let you get to this way. We do have uh, uh, one person that's going to address the board tonight under public comments, and as everyone knows, but I'll go through it uh, as usual. Uh, anyone that is not on the agenda, uh, you know, so do the other meetings while we aren't uh, able to have a conversation with you. But uh, we certainly listen to everybody who signs in. Uh, should someone want to actually have a discussion with us and have a question and answer type thing, all you have to do is call uh, uh, <coughs> Mr. Minkiff's office and he'll make sure that you're on the agenda and then we can do that in the future meeting if that is necessary. But uh, for right now, um, uh, Jimmy Armstrong uh, is going to talk to us about the Duval football field. Mr. Armstrong. I'm glad y'all let me to speak. First oh. off, we're more than happy to hear you. Uh, everybody calls me Dale. So. Okay, Dale. All right. Um, back when my kids played football, I understand the Lions Club football, or the Lions Club had the football field. And I understand now that the Lincoln County Board has acquired the field. Um, back then, we used to do things the Raiders did. We kept up keep on, basically. We kept it cleaned up when flooding went off, all that. Um, Mr. Wilkerson would remember that. Um, we had some issues down there at this time. Uh, from my understanding, what well, I've been here, and it's been going on for several years now. And my grandson plays down there, actually two of my grandsons. I'm the president of the Duval Raiders this year. Last year I was the treasurer. And I'd like to try to get some of these issues fixed for the kids. Uh, first off, uh, the year before last, I believe it was, we had a contractor, some licensed contractors that was willing to donate their time and some material to fix some things up around there. <coughs> and I'm not bad-mouthing nobody here, okay? I've actually had a talk with Miss Patton again this year. She is willing to work with us. I just found out about this meeting, thought I'd come down and voice my opinion. Um, there needs to be some painting done inside the concession in the bathrooms. We're willing to do that at our expense. Uh, we have contractors with license that's willing to come down there and fix some of the things that's wrong, like fixing the fences where they're being. Uh, if there's some issues with the bathrooms, whatever. Okay, but we would bring that before you guys first to get it okay and show you their actual credentials. Um, there's several things down there that needs to be updated. And I know the school board has to use some of their maintenance crew to do it. But I'm just wondering if it will speed up the process if we have licensed contractors that will show you their license, come in or do some of that, save the county board some money, plus get the work done with the materials and the labor. There's plenty of people down there that will help. I know the baseball teams want lights, the uh, track teams want a little field. We need some stuff done for the football field, and everybody's willing to pull together and start a booster club for this, if we can do this. 
So I just want to make y'all aware there is help out there that we're willing to do. Um, I know last year, after season, somebody come in and they destroyed the bathroom, basically. And, you know, y'all know as well as I do what goes off around here. After season and stuff, everything's unlocked down there. Not everything, the bathrooms. Somebody broke into the press box, poured the wind off. I don't know if all the equipment's <laughs> up there still getting on. I don't know. But we would even be willing to do a fundraiser to upgrade the equipment if y'all will let us do that. And we was also wanting to know if we can get sponsors. Somebody donates X amount of dollars. Can we hang signs on the fence to promote their business? Which in one turn help the field. If they come down there and work on it for free, licensed contractor, can they hang a sign there to sponsor their business that they've helped? That's basically all I have. I just want to try to get this moving forward get some more people involved and make it a better field for the kids. We can paint their logos on some of the buildings, the soccer team, the baseball team, the football team, show them kids that it is their field. And when visitors come in, they see a really nice field down there. And we can be proud of one of them. That's all I've got to say. I hope y'all take into consideration and let us work with you to get this done. Thank you, Mr. Armstrong. Some mom will be in touch with you. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, I was the only person that signed in to speak to us uh, tonight. But on the uh, presentations and reports, Rhonda Percy is going to talk to us about 20th century, uh, well, about 20th century, providing information regarding the resource officer grants. Oh, okay. Mr. Curry here just perked up. Rhonda? What I have for you is just a um, brief synopsis of a few grants that have come to my attention, including a grant that Lee was able to find out about through Logan County. We've been working with Christy on this, trying to get Lee in line. And um, um, honestly, the uh, OJJP, which is the Office of Juvenile Justice Department, the earliest or the <laughs> newest thing I found with any information was from 2011. But that, what well, I was told today when I spoke with uh, Ms. Boggess at the department, State Department is that they are upgrading all those fact sheets. Um, this grant, let me get my talking points out so I don't lose my place here. Uh, there are possibly three grants that we're going to currently look at <coughs> for the school resource officer. The first one is through the juvenile justice delinquency system. Now this grant will only fund up to $18,000 of salary and fringe benefits which leaves the county and the community um, center a, an approximately $7,600, but that is not counting fringe benefits. Um, Christy called me and she said, she's trying to get me the fringe, fringe benefit uh, formulas, but the, uh, the treasurer was not able to give her the information today. So unfortunately, I don't have that I'll give you more numbers when I find out. Uh, we are working closely with the Hamlin Community Center. Christy and I, we're on first name basis. She has been so helpful in procuring information for me regarding this that it is, as soon as I get the information from Logan County, I can have this branch ready and out by next week. So that is one of the grants we're going to be working on. Now the benefits of this grant will show that the um, SRO, the school resource officer, is a collaborative a community team work between the town of Hamlin or community center as well as the school system. So as far as community relationships goes, <coughs> that is a positive note for this grant and it will um, also enable 
him to any uh, overtime that he works that will be paid for by the community center. Now, with that being said, there are two, maybe three more grants because I did find another one. This morning I got an email that had approximately nine different grants that came through. Anywhere from um, obesity camps to drones. <laughs> I have a little search engine that I had put out there and at, sometimes I may get a trickle, but today I got several. So needless to say, I was a little overwhelmed when I got some of these grants in, so I've been researching them. I pulled Jeff in to talk about the one. Now the one is the second page, as you'll see. This is through the uh, COP, that's a CDP, CPD grant. Now, it's not really, it's not the grant, the SRR grant that I was originally waiting on. That one is not going to be um, open until the, towards the end of May. But, yes, this, no, this one's open now. But the original grant that I have been waiting on, that Mr. Curry, that Mr. Curry, that Mr. Curry yeah, that, we, <laughs> yeah, that one is, <laughs> I guess spring to them is closer to the end of May. And that may have something to do with what we talked about, about the months going farther in instead of uh, spring being in April, it's now in May. Maybe that's where they're getting their dates from. But that's where we are at this point. As I did find out from uh, speaking with one of the ladies there that that grant has, uh, go back to my notes, um, that grant that I'm going to that we have spoke about will pay up to 75% of the salary. So that would basically take care of all of the grant or all of the salary if we were able to get both grants. This third grant that you are looking at right here, if I can get uh, some more information, which the lady told me she would call me back tomorrow, um, it's possible that grant can go anywhere from $100,000 to $300,000, depending on which grant, the type of grant, and how long that grant will be. <coughs> that being said, that means that um, it's possible that another resource officer could be located at one of the middle schools, because that is one of the um, topics of research that I have recently found that they're wanting to start putting the school resource officers in the middle schools to maybe stem and prevent instead of having to intervent. So, um, one of the things that we'll have to look into though is offering other programs that this officer would have to do with the $300,000 grant, such as their programs, um, working with the family drug court system, so any of our students that are in the family drug court system will be able to work with the SRO as under a mentoring capacity. So there is a wide, <laughs> it's just broad, what we can do, can do with these three grants. And as I said, I started the one grant this morning, and as soon as I get the other information, uh, that one will be taken care of. We'll get these other ones started. This grant, um, the CH, or, I mean, this grant right here, I lost my place, will also cover students that are homeless. So if we know if students that are homeless, this officer can also be in touch with them as to their well-being. So um, it's called an open topic grant. That's one of them that we will be looking at. And I may need your help later on that. Okay. Now, the final grant, the COP hiring program, which Fred had um, brought to my attention, it's a 36-month award with $125,000 per officer position. Now, that covers 75%. Uh, well, actually, it covers more than 75% of what um, our current SRO makes. So 
it's possible that with this funding we may be able to obtain like I said another officer as well as have all salaries paid for if funded how much was that mr. Curry's how much did that go uh, did it is 125 per officer position up to 125,000 mm -hmm. per officer yes but that's for 36 months that as well as we have to also um, just make sure that we have the specific needs well what i'm getting at yeah are we looking at something that's a three-year i'm looking at two three-year grants uh, one well, one-year grant but that amount that you just gave us are we really thinking that only one-third of that would be available each year mm, let's see here if it's 36 months for the name of the minimum 25 percent local cash match and maximum photo share it you know what because i copy and pasted this over onto my notes and it doesn't clarify was well, being so, that it's 36 months it kind of implies to me somewhat that maybe you know a third of it each would be left for each year now you said you're, you're talking to someone with the u.s government right? mm -hmm. okay. okay two people <laughs> um one's name is um Ms. Baucus, and the other one's name is Paulette. That she said. So, uh, yeah. And now, if now it's, and this is a little ambiguous. Like you said, it, it's you can read interpret it as it's one hundred twenty-five thousand over the three-year period. However, when we're looking at the federal grants, like I am working with for the um, after-school programs, that's a five-year grant with a start out of 220,000 for three year, first three years, and then it decreases by percentages the last two years. So in reality, you get almost a million dollars over the course of the five years. So um, I would have to investigate that a little further to exactly know if that's 125 per year, or if that is 125 over a 36 <coughs> month period, which seems kind of odd because that's a, That's not a divisible number. Right. So well, even uh, if it were over a three year period, that amount there would Oh yes, because be as of right now, um, his fringe I mean, his salary without fringe is thirty three thousand two hundred and eighty. So over a three year period, that's you know, almost a hundred thousand, then you add the fringe, which 20%, that's almost, <coughs> that's almost 225000 Now, this, when you say his salary, is that, are you talking about his total salary for the whole year? Yes. Okay. Yes, I, uh, Christy and I worked on that this morning. Yeah. Because, I don't know whether you've looked at what our agreements in the past, but, you know, our uh, agreement is, isn't for the whole year because he isn't employed. You know, he's employed by the town of Hamlet. And all that is whole time. Uh, yes. I, I, and Rhonda, I, I've not had this discussion with her. But that thirty-three thousand—that's that, actually the salary why he's working for us. Um, actually, no. That is, he makes sixteen dollars an hour at, uh, and that's at forty weeks times fifty-two Let's weeks. Let's go back and look at that again. So, so um, that's what we're paying. Right. On that. I was thinking we paid about thirty-four or thirty-five right. thousand. So yeah. yeah, we may want to look at that because if. Um, well, what you need to look at. Mr. Media could make it available to you. Is the agreement we had in the past where all those categories were broken down? There was a salary and so much for the travel and maybe right. I'll give you a call. All those things. Um, the in kind on any of these grants are considered, um, you know, like for if we provide him a place to stay, you know, if he's an on site, that's part of the in kind which is usually takes effect the second year of a federal grant like this. Um, in kind also includes his uh, uniforms, if somebody pays for those. So that would be the in kind from the community. So uh, we, and, we provide him housing, so that ought to be. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know. And when he told me, I was like, well, I said, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but now, you know, going back to what you just said, um, what we would have to do is figure out how many hours he works within the school system, including those days that he works ball games or what have you. Well, that's why Mr. Yeah. Mayor can, can share with you our past agreement because we took all those things into consideration. Okay. And we, it was all broken down considering what he, the 
time you spend actually at the high school during the school day and the number of days, and then the time we uh, provided an allowance for so much where you work all day when that right period. Yeah. Okay. But okay. you know, if if we get a grant, we may need him a few more hours out there. We can right. use him more. And I know when I spoke with him, you know, he said that um, if he had overtime, and that would be something like if he did the community parades or something like that, all of his overtime was, he wasn't sure where it was paid from, he thought it was paid from the community. Christy verified that this morning, so, you know, he's, because I looked at her, I looked at her, I said, I kind of, I was looking at my papers and I went, you know what, school board won't pay overtime. <laughs> she goes, yep, that's the reason we do. Well, that's what I mean. In the, yeah. We've had this before. They've come before us. The mayor's come and, and the resource officer, and they, you know, shared this. You know, here's what we think our expenses are, and then they explained it to us, and we kind of came to it. You know, so, if you get me if you can get me the latest, then I can work from there. Because that will also work well when I'm working on that budget for that grant. Okay. Yes. Now, are there any questions about that? Because I do have some updates. Go to the updates, then we'll do our questions. <laughs> okay. Right. Now, just to remind everybody, Thursday is the last day of after school. We have, you know, a couple of the schools are doing some really cool celebrations, tie-dye t-shirts, having photo memories, and um, a couple of the other ones are taking nature walks. Uh, high school's having a pizza party because that's what the kids wanted. That's what the kids wanted. That's what they're getting. So, you know, um, one of the students was like, this is courtesy. It's over. I was like, well, it is for this year. But I did receive the information that we received two 20,000 supplemental summer breaks. So there will be six weeks of summer camps this year. In addition to the Energy Express at two locations, um, athletic camps, band camps, so from the time school ends to the 1st of August, there is no reason why any of these students cannot say they had, didn't have an opportunity to be busy because they're going to be out there this year. Do you so have an idea have where those are going to be located? The high school. It's, it, we have found it has been easier to centralize it. Uh, we had actually more of a turnout with it being centralized. It was easier to what, use it as a feeding site it was easier for uh, the facilitator to monitor it. It was easier for me to monitor it than going from place to place during the summertime. And well, it just it's worked out really well. And the Energy Express is going to be at West Hamlin. West Hamlin, and there will be one at Big Ugly. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It, uh, he is working with Michael Tierney on that one. Michael Tierney has reached out to me wanting to know how we can collaborate with him uh, regarding that as well. Uh, I have not been able to get back with him. I was out of town a little while last week. Um, I'm also currently working on two more, two more 21st century grants. This is the last year for Midway and Hamlin's grant, but I will be renewing that grant. So I'm working on that one currently as well as a 20, 21st century grant for Guyan Valley. West Hamlin Ranger. What do those entail? Summer pro uh, after school programs, just like we have. All, the, all, all of these are after school. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, working on those, you know, it's like I said, each grant will be written for two hundred twenty thousand. Hey, if they're going to put a limit at two hundred twenty thousand, I will find a way to use all that money. You know, if it's for our kids, I will find a way to use that money or get that money. Um, Oh, and I'm not sure you guys are aware of this, but we had a um, opportunity last year to get on board with Education Alliance and Toyota and was offered a grant for our Born Learning Academy, which is a zero to five learning program. We are currently in our second year and averaging 15 parents each session. It has been phenomenal. Next year, unfortunately, will be the last year for this, for our grant unless more funding is found. And Dion and I will be working that. In addition, we were offered another $1,200 to do a satellite site, and we're looking at doing it at Ranger next year. So, 
Dion and I have been quite busy with this to uh, make sure that it's going and gone strong and the response has been amazing. I'm just tickled with it. Um, just found out uh, before I walked out here, the um, Education Alliance has uh, given us the opportunity for the America, AmeriCorps Student Success Program again next year with three more, three mentors. I mean, I, just, you know, I walked out and there it was. There was, there was one on my email. So, um, with the exception of a couple of things that I've been asked to do, that's all I have. I have <coughs> been asked to sit on a steering committee for Family Leading Change. This is a new thing going on up at the Capitol that they're looking for uh, policy changes in families, nutrition, education, and they're going to be working from what I was told, working with the governor of this. So I was invited to be on this steering committee. I'm still looking at my schedule <laughs> to see if that's something, but that will also benefit us greatly, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. The board members, any questions about the resource officer or any of those things? Well, I'd like to thank you and tell Christy, I thank her too for getting after this because the money is out there. And, mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And we should have been doing this for three years ago. Well, and this grant, that we, I didn't even know that they went from Logan until uh, Christy yeah. told me about it. So I am really grateful that she reached out and showed me mm -hmm. and said, hey, we, we can get this. So. I'm ready to put it out then. Anybody have anything else to share with me? I have two questions, I think. <laughs> um, I always have two questions. Um, one, should you reach out and try to expand beyond the, the resource officer that's at the high school um, and go in other communities now, you would, if you're working in conjunction with Christie in the town of Hamlin, and if you were to go elsewhere, now that grant is going to be expanded. So I'm not, you know, whether you're going to be able to utilize that one grant, or since my understanding, this is really going through the town of Hamlin. This grant request. So, so if you're going to go to other locations, it's it would have to be local. Like it would have to be around Hamlin. Well, unless yeah. you right you run your own, or you went with some <laughs> other community and sought grants for other locations mm -hmm. that separate from the one from Hamlin. That, that's a possibility. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, if you, because I can see the ones here, I mean, you could probably justify it, or I guess you could the middle school in Hamlin, uh, along with the high school. But if you want to go to these other locations, it's almost like you'd have to have a separate grant. <coughs> well, now, the, um, the one grant that we're, Christy and I are working on right now that is specific, specified between the I, two. I understand that, but you yeah. mentioned there earlier that you could possibly, there might be monies available to have these resource officers in other locations, and then, you know, with the atmosphere of the country right now, there may be monies for things like that. Yes. And if so, it just, that you, and all I guess it seems like you might be having to have more than one grant request for if these things. Or, you know, and there's always the chance that you can bring in them. I mean, you don't have to have just two collaboratives. You can have, you know, a county collaborative working within the tank, the, you know, the towns. Um, I'm not familiar with most of the other towns, you know, West Hamlin, you know, if they have a council. I, I don't know. West because, Hamlin does. You know, uh, I'm still learning the roads here. Right. Well, that's what <laughs> I, you might have to, you might be able yeah. to get more than one. I mean, I think you certainly want to go through the town of Hamlin and that the one you're working with there. I'm just saying you might, in addition to that, be able to seek other grants that aren't in conjunction with the town mm -hmm. for other locations. So what I was, I think, what Steve really getting at, if we got one grant and maybe fund two officers, the town of Hamlin couldn't send a placement to the guy in Valley. No. Yeah. Yeah. So that would. I would have to um, do a little bit more research. Well, maybe, yeah. I, I mean, we're, think we're on the fly here, but maybe you, uh, in conjunction
conjunction with the sheriff's office or something that you uh, yeah, have doesn't a, have to be a specific police. No. Well, what I'm saying is if it's going to be at Hart's Mill or or Guy and Valley or Duval, I'm trying to think of something that's countywide that you could get a grant to yeah. and, you know, that would involve those people or you know, some other, unless we were just seeking it on behalf of the Board of Education, then we wouldn't really need somebody else. Well, from what we were, when Jeff and I was going over the fact sheets, um, it is one of the, I believe, it was a criteria that law enforcement be involved. Now, the one that uh, Christy and Lee found from Logan County has been written by the sheriff. So because of that, they're able to expand. And with that being said, there's no reason why we couldn't work with the sheriff's department and that way, because they do cover the whole county, you know, use that collaborative to expand into the other schools. But we definitely want to pursue the Hamlin one because they have their own police department and you know, that's one we're utilizing. And yes. Because the other one, we can do that too. So that's something to look at. The only other thing I had was the one that was uh, uh, only up to $18,000 a year. Yes. Uh, now, do you, have, do you know if uh, there's anything that prohibits you having, uh, using two grants together? No, you can do that. Okay. As, lo as long as the fiscal agent, which will be the... Um, Town of Hamlin is um, prepared <laughs> and, and re you know ready to do that you know because you know, it, as Ray could <laughs> verify paying somebody out of two grants is not easy but it can be done so you know they can use one grant to pay for so far and another grant to pay for this much you know however they would work it out but yes it can be done okay. and it might not even be an issue. Okay, cool. that's yeah, might be one more thing. thing. Is there anything in these grants that you stole that might permit you to buy a drug dog with this money? Mm. Mm. Well, I understand we're having a hard time getting drug dogs to come out of that. Drug dog grant. <laughs> and I, I just found a grant for uh, goldfish in the classroom. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't see why we couldn't put the badge on that goldfish. <laughs> well, I mean, we could work with the town of Hamlin on that, and they could have the drug and gold. Um, I got that on my notes right here. And we could build a dog out yeah, there with the trailer. Yeah. Hey, we, we, could, we could have the boys down here at the high school build a nice little dog house, you know. Yeah. And leave my wedding in the house. <laughs> All right. All right, yeah. Anything else? Thank you, Ms. Kirby. You're Dr. Kirby. <clears throat> All right, appreciate it. Okay, let's go on now to the uh, administrative <coughs> section. Can I have a motion to look at those items? <coughs> Carol makes a motion. I'll second. Second by Fred. Mickey. Item A, school volunteers who on occasion may also serve as bus chaperones for athletic events, academic competitions, or school outings, <coughs> and have completed <coughs> volunteer orientation. Item B, out-of-county student transfers for the 2018-2019 school year. Item C, out-of-state travel for the following personnel. Item D, five additional employment days for the following music slash band instructors to conduct a mini band camp June 27, 28, 29, July 2nd and 3rd, 2018, at County High School. Item E, approval for Lincoln County High School Band to perform in parade at Queens Island on May 31st, 2018, transport by charter bus. Item F is Marshall University student Samantha Smith to perform social work field experience at Lincoln County High School during the current semester. Item G, Grand Canyon University student, Valerie Kelly, to perform observation at Midway Elementary during the current semester. Item H, Western Governors University students, Tierra Bragg and Tori Bragg, to do student teaching at Hamlin PK-8 during the fall semester 2018. 
Item I, adoption of the following textbooks as recommended by the Textbook Adoption Committee for a six-year adoption period effective with the 2018-2019 school year. Yes, vote on the administrative items? Yes. yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, from Mr. Baker. Okay, let's go to finance. Can I have a motion, please? So do. Mr. Wilkerson? I thank you. Mr. Baker? Yeah, I got you. Ray? Uh, schedule of invoices totaling $288,318.69 for listing in the <coughs> Yes, vote on the finance items? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right, let's get a person up. Have a motion, please? Fred? Sir. Thank you, Mr. Wilkerson. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay, make sure everyone has the, uh, there's a revised one. Revised. Yes. Blue. Personnel yes. skills. Okay. okay. Item A, appointment of professional personnel pending passage of practice and issuance of certification. Item B, employment of professional personnel pending renewal of first class permit. Item C, employment of professional personnel pending FBI, CIB clearance and issuance of first class permit. Item D, employment of professional personnel. Item E, transfer of professional personnel. Item F, employment of, bunched out there and I can't see it. <laughs> a substitute service personnel. Okay. G, transfer of service personnel. Uh, H, employment of service personnel. I, leave of absence. J, retirement or resignations. And abolish service uh, personnel posting. That's a cook at Duval. Uh, we had a job come open, there was a half-time cook up there, didn't want to go full-time, had seniority over somebody else, then after the other person got it, they said, no, I believe I want to go full-time, now they're saying they're not, so we may be coming, we're going to have to go right back and post it. But that's good. And, it, and termination of extracurricular athletic contracts. Uh, we left those two off. We discovered that when we was doing contracts, we left those two off, so we made, made that correction. Just, you know, we have to do that honor before May 1st, so we did shut. But I appreciate you letting us bring in a revised agenda because it really put us about two weeks ahead in the, what we're doing because we brought this in the 15th. <coughs> it's been a long time for the next one. We're right, you know. Does this give you adequate time, Bill, to do one on the 15th? Should, should. Yeah, I hope so. Should, should I hope so? Yes. yes, I hope so. But you know, this way getting these out early, we're able to hire some people maybe for someone else now. Absolutely. Thanks, Blake. Great. Do I have any questions about any of the personnel items? Okay, fine. Is that an all yes on the personnel items? Yes. yes. All right. Yes. Yes. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Any regular agenda board members? Anybody have anything? Baker, do you have anything you have to do No, sir. Okay. All right, Mr. McKinney. Um, Greg Gosney. <coughs> Mr. Gosney will be here at the next meeting to provide a maintenance and facility update. He's got a lot of information to share with you. There's a lot going on, um, <coughs> as you know. So um, he wasn't able to be here this evening, so we got him scheduled for the next meeting. Don't uh, bring the board up to date with what's going on. Uh, I was on the phone today with uh, Mr. Snyder uh, talking about graduation. It's hard to believe we're wrapping up another school year. Graduation is just three weeks away. Uh, I just wanted the board to know that graduation uh, invitations will be going to come out shortly. Uh, graduation will be held on the 
Friday, May the 25th at 7 p.m. That's in hopes that the sun will just be right <laughs> below that. Below the big tree. Yeah. So we backed it up. And uh, just a reminder, as, as we've done the, this past the, this past year for graduation, we are going to dismiss one hour early, countywide, to help with the congestion. Uh, those buses coming back in, that's been a nightmare out there. So on that day, we, there will be a one hour early dismissal for students. And just a reminder, at 5 p.m. on the 15th is our student celebration today and did some work when they work uh, with that, that ceremony what that's going to look like uh, we'll, we'll hold the ceremony down in the large conference room like we did last year and then uh, the board meeting will be in this room so, <coughs> and that's all I have so, okay. all right if no one has anything else uh, let's adjourn until May the 15th at 6 p.m. in the county office if you just need to celebrate the five preceding the board members. I mean, is that a, have a, can I have a motion, please? Carol. Carol and Rowdy seconded that. Done all yes? Yes. yes. yes.